Shireman, ISS program manager here at the Bike and Our Cosmo, Joan Kirk, uh, another Soyuz ready to go, another trio of, in this case, very, very experienced crew members headed for the station. How will that experience match the pace of work that will greet them and their other crewmates on board? Well, this will be a great time uh, for the USOS, for, uh, for NASA and, and, uh, and the USOS partners, ESA, CSA, JAXA, because we'll have four crew members uh, working on the U.S. segment. So there's a tremendous amount of work to be done, uh, a lot of research going on right now. We have a SpaceX flight coming up here in less than a month. So uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of work coming forward, and we'll be glad to have four U.S. crew members for the first time ever on board the International Space Station. And in terms of crew complement, what is the importance overall of restoring the station to a full six-person capability? Yeah, well, the station was built for six, actually really seven crew, and, uh, and our tradition for a number of years has been to have six people on board, so we're really happy to be up to the normal complement, and we're looking forward to commercial crew here in the not-too-distant future where we'll step up to a total of seven uh, crew members. So uh, big things in store for us here over the next couple of years. I'm always struck by the fact that when a multinational crew launches, it just shows the whole face of what the station program is all about. How important in terms of the legacy of the space station, is that? Uh, you know, it's one of the great things about this program is people from all over the world uh, are participating in the ISS. Uh, 
this flight here will have a U.S. crew member, a crew member from uh, Italy, a crew member from Russia, and so that crew is a microcosm of that. But uh, not only from all the partners have we had crew members, but the researchers have touched over 90 countries around the world. So it really is a global endeavor, and you kind of see that in the faces of the people here ready to support this launch. Can't let you get away without a question about Peggy Whitson, who's in the home stretch of her longer than expected mission. Uh, talk a little bit about the accomplishments and what she has brought to the station during almost 10 months in orbit. Sure. Well, Peggy's an exceptional individual. So Peggy, Peggy, for uh, her recreation, she does more research. So she really has set the bar in terms of uh, the utilization that's been conducted on board the space station. Even today, when she and uh, Jack Fisher are the only two U.S. crew members, still a tremendous amount of, uh, of research going on board the U.S. segment of the space station. So great, uh, great accomplishment she's had up there. And of course, she's basically writ written the book, not only for, for women, uh, but for, for all U.S. astronauts. It's, uh, it's really quite the accomplishment. She's going to be in the record books for, for decades to come. So, Frank Devin, you're the head of the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. Uh, how do you feel when you're here uh, as the boss of the astronaut and also as a former astronaut? Of course, it's always very exciting to be at uh, Baikonur, uh, especially when uh, you see the rocket uh, so close by, because we know that there is uh, one more European astronaut that's going to fly to space to bring uh, further science, technology, exploration uh, to our European countries. And, uh, of course, we had uh, just uh, Thomas Pesquet from France coming back. We have now Paolo Nespoli from Italy. Next year, we have uh, Alexander Gerst uh, preparing. So we're really uh, having this uh, European exploration program, so it's really great to be here. Uh, and we get a great experience of this uh, long duration mission. I mean, it, it's a, this was a big shift, I think, with your first flight, remember, when the, uh, well, now nine years ago, and this has been rolling and rolling. Uh, yes, indeed, with uh, all these long duration space uh, flights, of course, we are getting more and more expertise. Uh, our astronauts, of course, but not only our astronauts, also the center, the people that work around the ground controllers, our control center. So uh, we are really building up human spaceflight expertise in Europe. And this is, of course, the, the step that we need to prepare the future where we're going to explore further beyond LEO, maybe go to the moon uh, back and then, of course, eventually the century to Mars. Yeah, yeah it's uh, really incredible that we are still here on the, the same launch pad where uh, Sputnik was, was launched and afterwards uh, Yuri Gagarin was launched from this very launch pad. So uh, we are now 60 years further. Uh, we of course are not in competition anymore. We do everything in international cooperation with our partners from NASA, from Roscosmos, from JAXA, from Canada. And this is another great aspect of uh, human spaceflight. It means that even though we see that there are a lot of conflicts in the world today, we still manage to work together and to fly our astronauts and cosmonauts together. Tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, we will see a Russian, an American and an Italian astronaut fly together to space. What can be more beautiful in a time like this? Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration. Uh, Bill, this pad saw the birth of the space program with the launching of Sputniks almost 60 years ago. Your thoughts on how far the planet, the human race has come in six decades? It's, it's really amazing. You, you see the patch on the side of the rocket uh, celebrating the 60th anniversary of, uh, of the Sputnik launch from this very launch pad. And it's absolutely amazing to think a simple, easy little satellite was launched from this pad 60 years ago. And here we're getting ready to go launch three crew to the most complex engineering marvel ever built in space, the International Space Station. I mean, what a tremendous transition from that period of time when we didn't know much about this, the Sputnik. We, we, we were, you know, it was a very different time politically. And now today we're cooperating with, you know, with the launch of a Russian, an Italian, and an American to an International Space Station from that same launch pad that was kind of closed in secrecy when it launched a, a, the Sputnik 60 years ago. Just the transition is phenomenal when you think about it and to see the dedication and the spirit of the people here today, I'm sure that same dedication and spirit was with the people 60 years ago here on this launch pad. What is the significance of this launch in terms of not only restoring the station to its normal complement of six crew members, but to match the pace of the work that lies ahead? Yeah, I think it's really exciting. We've got a lot of research going on board station. 
and to get the additional crew members up there, to get the additional hands and eyes and brains to actually go do these experiments is going to be just a tremendous benefit to us. So I'm really looking forward to these three crew, three crew getting on board station and beginning to dive into that research. So we haven't held back too much. The crew's been tremendously effective on orbit, but to see this big bounce that'll come when we get three more will be very exciting. And it's good to see station back at a full complement of six crew. And when a fourth U.S. orbital segment crew member gets up there in September, so much the better, right? Yeah, again, you know, it, it's not intuitive, but you add an additional crew member and effectively we get a 50% increase in crew performance and time on orbit for research. And, and that's enabled because the crew member doesn't really have to do any maintenance or any other activities on the station. They can be pretty much dedicated just to, to research activities. So I think, again, what's amazing about station is the hardware is phenomenal. The research equipment that's on orbit is just state of the art. And now we're going to have the hands and eyes and ears that can operate that state of the art research equipment to see that teaming of that state-of-the-art equipment with the state-of-the-art humans, it's going to be unbelievable the amount of research that comes out of Space Station for the remainder of this year. And finally, we're in the final weeks of Peggy Whitson's long-duration mission, almost 10 months on the station. What is her legacy going to be, not just for the time she's been on orbit since last November, but over the past two decades that she's flown? Yeah, again, I think Peggy is a very special person, and the fact that you know, she began her life as a researcher in the human uh, re research activities, uh, you know, looking at bone loss and that kind of research. So to start with that science background and then get a chance to become an astronaut and actually go fly is just phenomenal. And, and Peggy is a, an inspiration to all of us. She really challenges the ground team. She gets work done much faster. She keeps the, the on-orbit team uh, marching to a good uh, pace and a good cadence. Just a tremendous individual. So to see that same dedication she, she exhibited when she was a basic researcher to now as an astronaut is just phenomenal. So she's just had an amazing career. You know, I, I look at all our crew members, they're all special in their own way, but, but Peggy just has that unique aspect of going from the researcher all the way to an astronaut today. So Sasha Ryabova, you're the wife of Paolo Nespoli. How does it feel to be here next to the rocket that will take him into space tomorrow? It is definitely very excited, uh, very exciting. Uh, it's kind of bittersweet because we've come through a long training and we really enjoyed it and we know that this is the last uh, flight for Paolo. Uh, but definitely I'm very happy to be there again. I'm also happy to be here with the kids because last time uh, our elder daughter was uh, very young and she stayed home. Uh, today we came with two kids, a three-year-old Max and uh, eight years old Sophia. And uh, they, it's, it's just so much uh, fun for them and it is very important, 